welcome everyone to the Sreshta Purposefully Passionate About Domestic Abuse Awareness series. This is a series aimed at bringing awareness to different types of domestic abuse. Domestic abuse is not only physical, so saying that someone does not hit me, so I'm not in an abusive relationship is not accurate. So today we are trying to bring awareness to persons who have gone through a domestically abusive situation going to talk to them to understand what their journey was, how they ended up in this situation, and how they came out of it. The intent is that if someone identifies with the person who is speaking or identifies with the person's situation, it motivates the person to move on from that situation in the most safe way possible in order that you are able to live your happiest, truest self, feeling free and can to be anyone that you want to be. So today I'm really happy to welcome Rene Mufford. Rene by profession is a fitness instructor. She is certified by AFA, by the International Sports Sciences Association. And she has also completed the PTI, physical instructor training course. She has been dancing since she was nine years old. She holds certificates in jazz, bronze, silver, and gold from the Imperial Society of Teachers of dancers and grade four modern dance. She is a strong-willed person when speaks her mind and at heart, she is one of the best friends you can ever have. So welcome, Renee. Thank you so much for agreeing to share your story. So I'm gonna ask you, I know I gave you an introduction, but to say a little bit about yourself and who you are at heart. Thank you for that introduction, Trisha. You made me blush. <laughs> um, <laughs> What can I say about myself? What you haven't said already. I am very passionate about fitness, specifically Zumba, because it meshes my both worlds of fitness and dance. I have been dancing since I can remember, but enrolled in a dance school and it has been from nine on and off and then professionally joining Asheret's um, School of Dance and Dance Education. That's where my dancing career or my dancing journey really blossomed and bloomed. Um, as a child, I was very quiet. I was very, very quiet, oh. very shy. But that all changed <laughs> <laughs> when I did the PTI course. And they um, let me know that if you're an instructor and you need to teach people that you need to carry, you know, you need to be bold, you need to carry yourself. Right. Ever since then, I just... I found my voice and now I'm not afraid to speak my mind and tell people what I think and tell people, you know, wrong from right. Yeah. Yes, that, that's, that's really awesome. You are, you are definitely one of my most outspoken friends. <laughs> and which is also why I find your story is amazing because looking at you and knowing who you are, even if we weren't friends, I wouldn't have thought that you would have had the experience that you are about to share. Right. So I'm going to ask you to share with us your experience, starting from meeting the person and, and loving this person onto your, your journey and what happened. I would say that I myself was shocked and why I think it took me a while to realize that the situation was abusive. Mm -hmm. um, we met and this is to my shame because I've always told people about this. We actually met online. So we met through Facebook. We had um, Facebook friends in common and we shared common interests being fitness. Mm -hmm. And um, we started to talk, you know, randomly. It wasn't anything big, but we shared a lot. We were both um, Christians, believers in Christ. Like, you know, we would talk about church things. We believe in the Bible and certain. Mm -hmm. We had similar um, belief systems and then also the, fit, the love of fitness and exercise and we shared. And, um, okay. So he was born in Trinidad, but um, left at somewhere 13 or 14 or something like that. So most of his, his life, he lived in the States. And, um, he's, very, he's very intelligent. He owns right. businesses. So that too was also a pull because I, you know, somebody who is smart and running their own business yeah. and they could give you tips. And he has 
multiple degrees. Right. So a smart, so, fit, educated, smart, fit, educated, love Jesus. So I mean, right. what could possibly be wrong? Right. And um, it started to go from talking randomly, talking to once a week, then it went to a couple of times a week, then was mm-hmm. every day, and um, started to be video calls. Right. And from there, it blossomed into a relationship. And I remember at the start of the relationship mm-hmm. saying, do you have anybody that considers them, considers themselves your girlfriend? And he said, no. Okay. And okay. I remember it clearly because I said, when he asked me the question, I said, yes. And I said, yeah, I think I have something I need to break off before we continue, okay. before I, you know, mm-hmm. and he's like, so you had somebody all this time and you let me know. And I was like, well, you know, we were just talking, you know, it's not anything. Mm-hmm. So, um, it got very serious very quickly and okay. to, to the point of where we had a plan of how this relationship was going to go. So once it goes well for six months, long distance, he comes to Trinidad. Okay. Um, off and on. Then after that, another six months, it goes well. I would move up to the States mm-hmm. and within that time, of a year, I, we would get married so we okay. had a there was a there was a plan there was a specific there was a sort of plan okay so he comes to Trinidad okay and um he well he surprised me so he came a little earlier than usual okay so I thought it was cute of course <laughs> So he comes to Trinidad. So now I'm devot- I'm locking off everything. I'm devoting all my time to him. Mm-hmm. And I remember we were in the hotel room because he came to my apartment and he didn't like it. Okay. It was too small and had okay. too much clutter. And I remember him making a statement like, you know, I was coming. Why didn't you clean up better than this? And I really felt bad. I was like, oh, geez. You know, I was like, oh, okay. God. I really but should you have just felt that you should have, right? Nothing, yeah, like, nothing I, God, I should have done better. And I remember right. I being in the hotel room with him and I got a message on my phone and I put my phone down and I went in the bathroom. And when I came out of the bathroom, the whole atmosphere changed. I realized that he was upset. So I was like, okay. Something happened. And he's like, I'm going back tomorrow. I'm like, what do you mean you're going back tomorrow? So I'm like, all right, what happened? And he's like, he went through my phone and I was like, went through my phone so you went through my phone now and you are going through messages that you see with any male name mm-hmm. and you are seeing me telling these people well you know i'm in a committed relationship now so you know mm-hmm. we can't hang out like that or you can't come over and you are upset with the replies that the responses i'm giving these people mm-hmm. you're upset that i am not told that like i didn't say stop calling me don't talk to me i don't want to hear about it again and i am actually explaining you know well, I'm in a relationship now. That's upsetting to you. I apologized. I cried. I felt so bad. And I remember telling another friend, like, you know, oh my gosh, what I did, I messed up the biggest relationship in my life because, I mean, mm-hmm. again, full guilt trip. Eh? But at the point yes. in time, I didn't think that was happening. And of she course. said to me, and she said to me, Rene, I think, um, I think he, he doing too much. I think it's, you, you didn't cheat on him. You wasn't planning to cheat on him. Like, I think this is a bit much. Right. And in retaliation now, well, after say retaliation, looking back, okay, um, there was a friend's wedding that he was supposed to go, but the friend wedding, there was somebody in the wedding who had liked him, so he had said he was he was going to the wedding, and then they were all all the whole group was going to the honeymoon. So he was like, I'll go to the wedding, and I'm not going to the honeymoon because you know the person would be there. Okay. And he didn't go to the wedding and end up going on the honeymoon trip with the people. While well, I'm in Trinidad, okay. all of them went to Bego. And I'm like, that's not what we agreed on. How, why, why is this happening? And then it just, then I'm still feeling guilty for what I'm doing. And I'm just realizing that things, more and more things, like in it, picking up things. I remember um, him saying, um, like, sending me to the dentist, like, you know, issue for the teeth. 
um, okay. and the picking, like you know, I remember we. Oh goodness! Yes, camera. Yeah, sorry. Okay. I, come on, correct. I remember we um we went to the gym to work out, and he's training me, and I'm like, <laughs> dude. <laughs> Sorry, okay. I'm like, I'm like, dude, I've been doing this for over 15 years. I think I know what I'm doing. Okay. Like, if so, it's I mean, school, you know, yeah. so I'm like, but you know, at the point in time, I'm doing these things are happening and I'm not, and it only started to like come to a realization that this is not healthy. Mm -hmm. Like when people started to notice that I was unhappy. Okay. Be going already. You okay? I'm like, yeah. You don't look happy, and nobody has ever said that to me before in my life. Okay. My mother saying, "Your relationship okay? You're all good because you're looking, you know." And he's calling mm -hmm. every day because he eventually went back. He's you're calling okay. every day, several times for the day. He would call and then hang up and then video call. And at first I thought mm -hmm. it was cute, and then I'm realizing, but wait, you're checking to see if I am where I say I am. Okay. It's not cute. <laughs> no. And I had like a, a kind of aha moment when I was taking an online quiz about if mm -hmm. you are in an emotionally abusive relationship. Okay. And I was on question five. And I think I had checked just two, two or three mm -hmm. of the five. Mm -hmm. And I remember before I move on to the sixth one, I said, Remy, if you have to do this quiz, the fact that you pull up this quiz to do it, so right. wrong. Okay. And this the is six months, it was six months in? Yeah. It was longer. Okay. It was, a little, it was a little longer than, it was a little longer than six months. Okay. So I'm like, Remy, if you, if you have to do this, if you, the fact that you pull up this to look at this to, you know, find out. And in my research of, it, I came across the word gaslighting, which I have never heard before. Didn't okay. know what it was. I had to research it. And I was okay. like, it's gaslighting. Because I realized I've seen it coming up a lot. Okay. And when I read the, what gaslighting is, because mm -hmm. gaslighting is making a person doubt their reality. Okay. Basically. Mm -hmm. I have a whole background story, but basically that's what it is. Mm -hmm. And I remember when we started to have arguments about the same person that he went mm -hmm. to the honeymoon friend trip with mm -hmm. it coming out now that at the that at the beginning of our relationship you and that person were actually in a relationship and i was like mm -hmm. but i remember asking you that question and you said no and he's like no i said yes okay. and i was like no i remember you said no because i said yes so I remember it wasn't two yeses, it was a no and a yes. And I know I said yes to that question. Right. And he said, no, I said yes, I told you yes. And I, I remember sitting back and down. You started oh, out or think if you yeah, really said I that. really didn't, maybe he really did say yes. Maybe that was it, maybe it was a yes. And I just, and after I read the meaning of gaslighting, I was like, oh, okay. So that's what that was. Okay. And I still didn't leave. I still didn't mm -hmm. break up for whatever reason. I, I, I myself can't, you know, give you an answer because at the point in, because I think I had, I had really wanted it to work, you know, I wanted to be in a committed relationship and I, mm -hmm. I thought I had found the right person and I thought I just had to work through, you know, everybody yeah. have the issues you have to work through. So yeah. I had to think, all right, well, maybe you know, Renny, you are a person that likes to pack up and leave, you know, at this first sign of trouble. You're an adult now, you should work through the issues. So I'm trying to work right. through it. But okay. things are not getting better, things are getting worse. You are going through my Facebook. Any picture you see me with, with a person, a male person that you, you don't want, in fact, any male, it doesn't matter. So you went through all my pictures on Facebook and clicked like, for the ones you wanted me to delete and loved the ones I could keep. 
Wow, okay. And I remember a time in work, he called and he was like, um, like arguing from the minute I answered the phone. I'm like, what's the matter? What's happening? You're a liar. You're a liar. You lie too much. And I'm like, what are you talking about? We mean a lying. And then say, look at your phone. And he sent a picture. So apparently he's going through my Facebook and saw a picture of me in a party with people. So it was like a couple of meals and you know, like when they give any shots. So we were all mm -hmm. put in our cup to get a shot. Yeah. And I'm like, what is the problem? And he's like, this is the date you told me you went out with your best friend. And oh. I'm like, dude, look at the year. It is the date. But it was 2015. <laughs> my hair wow. is red. My hair is bright red. You were just in Trinidad. My hair is black. When mm -hmm. did you... You just spoke to me last night video call. This picture I have red hair. Like it didn't even, like it got so, you just watched the date and it didn't even, mm -hmm. like look at it properly. It just, you know, mm -hmm. it just and it you. was like going to bed with an argument, waking up with an argument or waking up to a million deleted messages. Okay. Or waking up to long, long messages of, and then everything was you, you you right and i remember we all have been like anything we had an argument and i disagreed with him i'm like no this and he's like but well, that's a fundamental difference between you and me because you know when you have three degrees you kind of think differently and i'm like okay three so he should have for my understanding of, of this right. and that like what does that have to do with anything and it was constantly being thrown in my face okay and, and let me ask you something um when he went through your phone and did the the light and the love did you actually delete those persons the pictures i deleted some and then like okay. half like i deleted some and then i was like mm. i took down and hid them so you know you could put it in a folder where you are loaded. so i oh, eventually did actually, that, that. that. okay <laughs> so you can make an album and with pictures and you alone could see so even if your friends Click only. Okay, okay. Okay. Right. So that's so that's what I did. I just like to, you know what? Wherever. And and then the the date for me to move to the States kept moving up. So it would have okay. been the next follow, it would have been the following year. And then after it was in December. And then after it was in November. And it's like, why are you waiting? Why are you waiting? Why are you not coming up now? Why are you not coming up now? I'm like, okay. We have issues we are working through. Why am you are rushing me to, yes. you know? And I remember there was also the time he said that to to get the we should do the fiance visa. Okay. Right, and I'm telling my friend that you know I'm thinking about applying for the fiance visa, and then she says, "So you're going to get married in ninety days?" And I'm mm -hmm. like, "What?" And she's like, well, with her fiance visa, you have to get married in 90 days. She said, I know, I just watched the show. That is the, okay. that is the name of the, that she said, that is the name of the show. Okay. I was, like, I was like, I wasn't aware of that. So then I asked him, I said, wait, if I come to the States on the fiance visa, we have to get married within 90 days. He's like, yeah. I was like, but we didn't speak about that. I didn't know that part. He didn't put that part out there, you know. It wasn't. Yeah. And it was just, and and it's so it, it's so strange now that I look back and I can see the signs clear as day and I've seen everything that wrong. And every time, like I see the definition of the word narcissist, or I see gaslighting, or I see abusive relationship or mentally abusive relationship, I am I am just always taken aback, like wow, I wasn't that. That's exactly what I was. Yeah. So how how did you realize that that this is what it was, that he was abusing you. I know you realized he was a narcissist. How did you realize those things and how did you end up breaking it off or, or leaving the relationship? Um, I tried to leave several times and he always promised to change. I mean, it lasted mm -hmm. as long as a week. And he's like, it didn't explain to me how I'm making you feel. And I used to use a term that, you know, he would always reference to my party, you know, going to fets. And I'm like, I'm Trinidadian, that's a normal thing. And he's like, no, I know a lot of Trinidadians and they don't do that. 
Mm-hmm. And I used to tell him that, you know, you kind of make me feel like if you're going to marry a stripper and you're trying to clean her up. Okay. And I used to tell him that constantly. And then after, when, like, the first time when I said, well, you know, I can't take this anymore, you know. And he's like, so why didn't you explain to me how I make you feel? And I would stop doing that and I would stop saying that. And then my mom, I was like, I have been telling you. Mm-hmm. I've been saying it. I said it more than once. Just. And I remember the first time we broke up. And he was like, you know, he begged for like a day or two days. And then I was like, okay, well, let's let's try. Mm-hmm. And he was literally good. I checked it. He was good for five days. Okay. And on the sixth day, couldn't hold it anymore. All the negativity just came. Right. And anything, it, and anything is, is that it was never him. He never took responsibility for anything, any of the problems. It was always me or I misunderstood him. It was never that okay, really. It was, I, I apologize. I, I should not have done that. Okay. Never said those words. And um, my aha moment was actually kind of scary because he used to talk about himself highly like how other people just talk about himself highly like you know like you know his um his co his his employees you know they say he's the best boss and how they come okay. with anything and and he was saying that somebody who knows him very well said you know i'm going to be sorry for your kids when you have kids because you're going to be so overprotective of them you know you're mm-hmm. probably smaller than with love or something like that. And to that extent, the person was saying it. And I remember thinking, I remember thinking the same thing that the person, I mean, as he said, I'm thinking the same thing and agreeing with the person and say, yeah, you probably are going to be that type of person. I can see you, you know, being too much over your children, mm-hmm. you know, being too intense. And I remember thinking, well, Renny, you know, you should probably stay and be his wife because you would be the best mother for those children because you would be like a buffer. Like wow. another person mm-hmm. might be able to buffer the situation between him and the kids. And as soon as I thought it, I was like, that is the one of the most unhealthiest thoughts you have mm-hmm. ever had or any. You are willing to sacrifice your... Your mental health and yeah, your happiness. Yeah. Mm-hmm. For, for children that's not born. I, yeah. <laughs> like children that that have not that have not been that they don't exist and i sat down and like immediately after i had a, a friend who was going through little problems with her boyfriend and to me mm-hmm. nothing to talk about and she was like girls i did it i break up with him i can't take it no more i'm done i'm taking things and i was like nah if she break up with him for that mm-hmm. you could definitely do this okay yeah so i think that was my aha moment and every minute i put my foot down it 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 got very ugly right so i mean your story is so powerful just knowing just knowing who you are so this person he really embraced you in the beginning he filled you with love i mean he was everything anybody may be looking for i mean in in the fitness world he's into the same things you are Mm -hmm. he he is smart i mean he's intelligent he he is believes in in god and belongs to, to to church all the things that that woman um, maybe are attracted to, uh, yeah. to to a man, and then even when you found yourself being is sort of in, enveloped in the love and look, looking for that for that sort of companionship, and he started to change, you were still willing to adjust or see what you need to change in yourself in order. To, to make this relationship work and there was no flexibility on his side and and if you're watching this is in no means in any way to put shame or to put down anyone or or the person that she's talking about it is not about that it is about the adjustments that a, a woman and a strong woman are that is willing to make in order to make a relationship work even when she realizes that the relationship may not be the most healthy for her and as she said um, even even what you're talking about with respect to wanting to be the, the mother of his children so the children will not suffer. I mean, to, for, a, for a woman to think that naturally we are nurturers and we always look out for everybody else. And so that is naturally what we would think, how we could fix this and what we could do 
sacrificing our own happiness and well-being. So I am so happy that you got out of it, but I, I want to ask you as well, because when a, a woman decides to come out of these types of relationships, it is also very difficult. It is not like tomorrow we're done, you out of my life, goodbye. So I just want to ask you, how did you cope with coming out and how, what you kind of had to go through to maybe say as final goodbye as you can, because I, I know sometimes these people look, but just explain for first people who are listening how you coped and what you went through to kind of to wash your hands so just um for me i think it was easier because he was he doesn't live in the country right. okay so it was a little easier to just it was easy to distance myself and physically distance myself okay. but we had gone at, we had bought something together financially so mm -hmm. now the separating of that right. has a, a back and forth in it. And then he, I mean, it's constant things of, you're so ungrateful. I bought this for you and, you know, and, mm -hmm. and, you know, so it was a lot of that, a lot, a lot of put down, a lot, a lot of put down. It had days and, and then one day you call and say, okay, you can keep it. Mm -hmm. And then I'd be like, you're sure? Like, you know, yes, it's fine. And then the next day he pulled back and said, no, you can't keep it because you're ungrateful. And he didn't even say thanks when I told you, you could keep it. And I'm like, and it was, it was just days right. of that. But um, my family did support me. They were like, listen, okay, this is not right. You are not happy. And we here for you. Friends supported me. Mm -hmm. uh, when we finally did make a clean financial break where I mm -hmm. don't have to see you, talk to you or hear from you anymore. Mm -hmm. He came to the country and tried to see me, um, mm. but I kind of had like a plan in place. Okay. Um, because I was expecting him to come at a certain point in time. I know he was scheduled to come at a certain point in time, but he came a little earlier, but I had a plan so that when he did come and I, I had somebody to call, somebody came and okay. got me. And I um I stayed at um fam I stayed with family for a while until I until I was sure he was out of the country. Um, there are he he has reached out a couple of times through mm -hmm. Facebook. Um, even though I blocked him. Um, mm -hmm. up to this day, there are a couple of times I am most positive that Instagram messages that I get are from him okay from fake accounts um for the last carnival i was because he wanted me to stop play mass and i was willing to do that wow okay <laughs> so the last carnival that we had before covid i took a picture with a friend and i got this random message from an instagram account saying um it will find you too old for that you should have some more self-respect and I'm thinking, okay. this is so strange from somebody that go through yeah. the account. The mm -hmm. account is totally fake. Okay. And I'm like, I mean, I, I can't say it's him. Of course. I can't say it's him for sure. But I mean, even now, if I see a strange Instagram like from a very strange account, I would take a, a wonder for him. Right. Wonder, you know, so... Mm -hmm. I was lucky in the fact that physically he was away from me right. and I could still keep it physically away from me. Um, mm -hmm. But I did have a plan in place. I still have a plan in place. There's still a plan mm -hmm. in case um, he ever decides to uh, come back because I realized, what I realized too is that it probably would have gotten physical. Okay. How did you realize I, that? Um, because the progression of the argument, the progression of the, the, um, the, what I should say, the, the progression of the, the verbal abuse, it okay. started to get more intense. Okay. Na it started to get nastier. And then I know myself, like, 
I, you would tell me some probably something so nasty, and then I would probably tell you something nasty. And I knew my mouth sink. Right. <laughs> okay. Just you know. Yeah. So if you're done at the point where you're telling me that you know you don't deserve this or you're like this and you're this and you're that, and then I tell you something to to trip you now. Why right. wouldn't it turn physical if you are already in that place where you are hitting me with words? It's not going to take much for you to hit me with to hit me physically. Yeah. Yeah, and actually in in situations where um it turns physical and, and sadly it might be physical and at the end, um the person sometimes never hit hit the person or, or never attacks the person physically. But yeah. that moment in that rage when when they do that sometimes unfortunately it is the end so i am i'm so glad you realized that and was strong enough and had the support um to help you come out of it because that is leaving those relationships are never easy and 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 this is someone that that you really loved and you really admired and you really this was something you know like when when we small and we thinking about who we're going to marry is like that person walked into your life and then at the same time you're wondering if it is, I have all that I dreamed about, but I have little things I don't like, but maybe I should adjust. And being the person that you are, thankfully, you saw, you saw who he was. You pushed yourself to separate from the relationship, however difficult it was. And thankfully, you had support to come out of it. Renee, I just wanted to pull out some of the pink flags or red flags that happened in your relationship. One, lying about the relationship status, gaslighting you, making you feel that your reality is not what it really is, constant arguing and nitpicking, putting down of your partner, using his education to suggest that maybe you were worth less than him because you weren't as educated as him or didn't have as much as, as much degrees as him, identifying things in you that needed to fix, like suggesting you go to the dentist and making you feel bad about it, Invasion of privacy, going through your phone, clear invasion of privacy and distrust, going through pictures and asking that you delete pictures with, with friends, making you feel that everything is your fault. For the viewers, I just wanted to pull out um, these red flags succinctly so that you understand that these are things that are not normal. They are not part of healthy relationships and they do not speak to you and your partner working together and having a a healthy, positive life where you can be all that you want to be. So I will ask you if there's anything you want to tell women in general, women or men, because men go through this too, in general, or anything you want to tell persons that may be experiencing something similar to what you went through. Um, one thing I, I've realized from coming out of this, like, Constant arguing is not healthy. And no healthy relationship has constant arguments. Right. And nobody should invalidate your feelings. So if I tell my partner, listen, when you do this, you make me feel like this. And they don't care or they push it aside or they brush it aside or they make an excuse. That's like a major, major red flag. And I realized I... I um I I I I like I gave that I, I gave him a lot of leeway like that you know I, I yeah. let that slide a lot and I shouldn't and then when you I watch now healthy relationships and I they don't argue that much they don't mm -hmm. you know they don't say nasty things to each other yeah or they don't make if I tell you listen you make me feel a type of ways oh gosh I'm sorry I didn't mean to do that you know I'll try yeah. my best next time. I never got that from him. I never got that from him. Mm -hmm. You know, it's always, well, you shouldn't have done that. Or this is, I only do this because you did this. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and even if you argue, I mean, it's okay to disagree, but it's how you deal with the disagreement. Yeah. It's not about putting each other down. Mm -hmm. So again, I want to thank you so much, um, Renee, for being brave enough to share your story as a domestic abuse survivor. I hope that your story will inspire other women and motivate them if they find themselves in an unhealthy relationship like you did to do what it takes to safely 
um, exit re the relationship if that is what you need to do. And of course, if you can work on your relationship, you can do that as well. It's not that I'm saying you need to always exit, but get the help and get the support that you need for women in domestically violent situations or domestically abusive situations. In Trinidad, you can call 800-SAVE, that is 800-SAVE, for support that is needed. And right now during COVID, there are also a listing of therapists that can help you freely with coping mechanisms in these situations. And I will share this listing at the end of the session. So again, Renee, thank you so much for sharing. Congratulations on who you are, being you, celebrating you in your most authentic free self. I am really happy for you. And thank you for being an inspiration. Thank you for having me. You're welcome.